Sarah Moore Grimka was a leading pioneer in the anti-slavery and women's rights movements in the United States during the 1800s. As she was the daughter of a South Carolina slaveholder, she grew a strong opposition to slavery along with her sister, Angelina Grimka Weld. At the time, as slavery was so prevalent in her social class, the idea of the daughter of a slave owner being an abolitionist was rather unusual, and she became highly criticized for her public role of supporting the abolitionist movement. She became more widely known after her letters against slavery were published in William Lloyd Garrison's abolitionist newspaper, The Liberator, along with her letters on the equality of the sexes and the condition of women, responding to Catherine Beecher's defense of the subordinate role of women. In addition to these letters, she also began to write a series of anti-slavery pamphlets and books, including An Epistle to the Clergy of the Southern States and An Address to Free Colored Americans. Following her published works, Sarah, along with her sister Angelina, were invited to tour the Northeast and address anti-slavery society conventions in support of the abolitionist movement, which at the time was unheard of for women. As they visited the 67 cities together, they became the first women speakers in front of a legislative body, though Sarah had the leading role. Sarah Moore Grimka was born in Charleston, South Carolina on November 26, 1792, as the sixth of 14 children to a wealthy family. Her mother, Mary Smith, was a dedicated homemaker and an active member of the community, and her father, John Fosherold Grimka was a wealthy and successful planter, attorney, and judge in South Carolina. She had committed to the Quaker faith in 1827 after her sister Angelina had joined a few years earlier. In 1829, she became an active member of the Society of Friends, an anti-slavery group, and led a leading role in this group. Six years later, in 1835, Sarah and Angelina had written a letter to William Lloyd Garrison about her feelings of the abolitionist movement, and it was published in his newspaper, mm -hmm. thrusting her into the front lines of the fight against slavery. However, as the letter was published, this caused much out outrage from the Philadelphia Quakers as both Sarah and Angelina were required to receive permission from the church before doing anything on their own. A year later, as she had gained attention in her ideas of anti-slavery, she, she was asked to lead a tour of speeches throughout the Northeast of the abolitionist movement. Following this tour, she had begun writing letters and published works, including the letters of, on the equality of the sexes and the condition of women. She continued to make, make progress in the anti-slavery movement and had later begun to focus on women's rights. In 1870, she declared a woman's right to vote under the 14th Amendment, and three years later, she had passed away at the age of 81. Sarah was the first woman to write a coherent feminist argument in the United States with her most famous being Letters on the Equality of the Sexes. This argument started by demolish, demolishing the arguments for inferiority of women, and it bega became the basic arguments for women's rights and women's suffrage in the 19th and 20th century. In these texts, she also argued how many holy texts were, women's, were men's translations and interpretations which varied from the true source because men suffered from the lust of domination and so they did not write God's truth, but instead one that served their own interest and desire to be superior. Her work diligently fought against the patriarchal self-interest and bias that shaped many texts of that era. Sarah always had a conscience that disagreed with slavery and fostered resentment with her family for it, but she really came to embrace and find her values with religion. Her views on race and gender were based on the Quaker faith and Bible that she interpreted as a book that was preaching equality. This equality was not only for all mankind on a race perspective, but for gender equality as well. In her letters and other publishings, she makes it clear that she sees Adam and Eve as two equals and decides to believe the creation story that also has that interpretation. In her letter, 
She even goes far enough to state how Adam is more to blame for his weak will and flesh that decided to sin. Throughout her work, we continue to see how her faith played a major role in solidifying her beliefs as well as how it fueled her arguments. Sarah was a Quaker liberal, which means that her practice highlighted the importance of good works in treating others equally as well as simple living. The Quaker liberals shared very similar characteristics with the liberal Christians by focus, holding a focus on the social gospel. They were receptive to a wide range of faiths and practiced tolerance and inclusivity. Like other liberal derivations, they rejected symbols like water baptisms and the Eucharist ceremony because they believed that these rituals could bring limitations between believers and their religion. With time, Sarah really embraced the Quaker liberal lifestyle and used her platform to voice her opinions. She received gender-based backlash that made her distance herself from the religion because they put limitations and obstacles between her and her mission, and because she was disappointed in their ig ignorance for acting on sexist ideas. For being activists and feminists and a drastic woman for her time, Sarah received a lot of backlash. Growing up in a slave-owning house with her mindset led to Sarah becoming an outcast for her, from her family and to the social circles they interacted with. Her open disagreement and free thinking caused tension at home and led to a lot of resentment among her family and eventually asking her to leave. Unlike her brothers, Sarah was not given the opportunity to pursue an education based on her gender, which led her to start to see the lack of freedom she had as a woman. Before she left home, when she was in her teenage years, Sarah's little sister was born and she was given a lot of responsibility to raise Angelina, which made leaving home very hard for her. A pivotal moment in her life was when she was with her ill father, who openly disagreed with her lifestyle and mindset, and then she was present for his death, which was both a blessing and a curse in her eyes, but short after, she had some mental health challenges that impacted her severely. Once she found her way again and sought out guidance through faith and became more vocal, she began to be discredited as a crazy woman and often belittled and harassed as a woman who was looking for any man who would have her. Another huge struggle that she faced was tackling several social norms at once by not only advocating for men, but also for race issues. She had promiscuous crowds, which meant they were male and female, as well as becoming close friends with Sarah Douglas, who opened her eyes to race issues in every aspect of society, including religion. The Grimka sisters had powerful and influential contributions on the nation's formative years, and they understood the relationship between sexism, racism, and economic inequality, which was an analysis of oppressive social constructions that was really ahead of their time. They ignited the conversation of these oppressive social systems with confidence and blatant honesty, which is still in the works for reform today. Sarah was able to start the, the discussion of how religion has its flaws and does not treat everyone equally. And she was able to discuss the importance of interweaving feminist and civil rights movements together, which is still a discussion today about the white female fem feminist and how there is distance because the oppressive systems that is imaginary and how they should be treated as inter intertwined obstacles, intertwined obstacles. She was able to create a precedent for normalizing mixed gender audiences when it, be when it came to politics and social issues. Sarah was able to kickstart this conversation on basic human rights and women's rights because she had experienced it firsthand and was a credible source for discussing the negativity and pain that those communities were feeling. Sarah was able to analyze and challenge the American political thought and started conversations that are still going on today. When thinking about the role that Sarah and her sister had in history of Christian women, it's more of a trickle effect. Sarah and her sister challenged many social norms and created a religious-based argument for women's equality, which affects everyone, including the church. Her own religion identity as a Quaker is a derivation of Christianity, 
but even with this, she is still recognized as a religious woman who fought for her right to be vocal about her opinions and hold importance in society as well as in the church. She is considered a feminist and social rights activist who devoted her life to her mission and has inspired growth in the church and in society. The discussion questions we have provided in, on Sarah Moore Grimka this week are, how did her religious views support or undermine her position in the anti-slavery and women's rights movement? If she had become an activist today in the United States, where would she stand in social and political areas now? What effects did her social